Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today we continue on with the nice question series. Today's question comes from the extension one syllabus and where we'll be doing a binomial theorems question. Um, classic question from the HSC 2008. Um, it's a proving question. It's worth five marks out of 70 marks, which, you know, substantial, right? So make sure you can do these types of questions when you uh, hit the trials and hit the HSC itself. So before I begin, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and tell your friends. All right, guys, let's dive right into it. So past paper question 2008. Um, now, a number of you might have seen this before recycled into your trial paper um, or into your exam papers. It's such a common nice question. Um, teachers generally like to repeat this, you know, not, not every year, but you know, every every few years, they'll bring it back. So let's, let's explore. P and Q positive integers. Now, P is less than Q. So if they're positive integers, right, that's basically saying that, you know, the numbers are like one, two, blah, 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 blah. Somewhere down the line, there's Q, which is then blah, 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 smaller than P, right? Yeah, that's what they're saying that, you know, P is less than, uh, Q is less than P. Cool. Use a binomial theorem to expand that. Okay. Actually, that's a question. So let's do it in green. So expand, they want me to expand that and hence write down the term of this, which is it. Okay. So when I expand that, I've got to find the term that's independent of X. Okay. No, not too bad. Given this, okay, this is fact. Don't need to prove that. Applied binomial theorem um, and the result in part one to get a simpler expression for that. Okay, cool. Not too bad. Now, so we know, and hopefully you know, um, that when I expand one plus x to the power of n, right? Yeah, in the sort of polynomial combinatoric expansion, it's all, it's like the general case of um, Pascal's triangle um, using Newton's formula, right? Where it's like n c. Actually, let's write the c's as they write there. N c zero plus n c one x to the power one plus n c two to the power of x squared, yeah, plus n c n to the power of x n. Right, that's cool. Now they want me to do the same for p plus q. Now, what's important in this one, right? If I go back up here to the integers, right? If this is q and this is p and they're positive integers, somewhere down the track, then there's going to be p plus q that's bigger than all of them, right? That's going to be the last number in this expansion here, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy and paste exactly this, right? I'm lazy. Don't need to write that again. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this guy with P plus Q. And then now, just like upstairs, P, uh, Q is smaller than P, smaller than um, P plus Q. So what I'm going to do is this, if this is okay with you. So Q occurs first. And you know what? Um, all these guys up here, it's replaced, right? They're now, maybe I was too lazy. Now that I, I can't fit um, P plus Q in upstairs. So P plus Q, P plus Q, P plus Q. So I'm just squeezing them in P plus Q, right? Because P plus Q is now the total for N, right? Now, first number here is Q. And then I know that somewhere down the track, there is a P, P plus Q, P. I'm just writing this in. I don't really need it, but and then the last term would obviously be p plus q, p plus q, x to the power of p plus q. Right now, so part one says you just expand that. Got it? And write down the term. Now they want me to divide this by. So once once you get that step right, that's done. They then now want me to do the same, and they want so I'm going to copy and paste right. They want don't they want me to divide this guy all by um, x to the power of q. So basically divide this whole term here by x to the power of q. Now, this is important because then they say, once I do that, find a term which is independent of x. Now, can you see if I divide by x, x to the power of q, there is one term, right? This term here, right? That matches up to the x q's. And when I divide it, that's the only term where x goes away. In other words, that's the term. If I broke up the fraction upstairs, that's a term that is independent of x, right? So therefore, the term that's independent of x is going to be 
P plus Q over Q, right? Pretty sweet. Is that okay? So basically, expand your binomial um, using Newton's formula, right? Appreciate that the fact that P plus Q has XQ, XP, and XP plus Q in that order. And then because I'm dividing it by X to the power of Q, this guy here has X to the power of Q, they cancel. It's the only term that's independent of X. If that's okay, um, you know, let's move on. All right, you know what? We're not moving on. I'm just going to copy um, to our next slide. All right, let's have a look. Zoom into that. Now, given, right, this is given that this guy is true, right, that that equals that plus that, sorry, that times that. Apply the binomial theorem, and more importantly, the result in part one is what really gives away where you need to go, right? Find a simpler expression than that. Okay, cool. So this is what I'm going to do, right? I already have this expansion, right, from upstairs, right? In fact, I'll, I'll copy and paste it from the last. Now, wouldn't it be worthwhile, right? Doesn't it sound like a good place to start if I sort of explore what this looks like, right? So now before I do that, let me copy and paste the expansion of this guy from here. Actually, I don't need it. Don't need it. Let's just... Explore the green box, right? Explore the green box. So 1 plus x to the power of p times 1 plus 1 on x to the power of q. Okay, cool. Now, if I use binomial expansions, I know that the first one, right, is going to be nc0 plus, sorry, maybe I'll use square brackets. There's too many rounded brackets here. Um, nc1, not n, p, right? p, p, p. Yeah, p. P, P, X1 plus P2, X2. Now, P is bigger than Q, right? So somewhere in here, there's going to be a P, Q, X, Q plus P, P, X, P. Is that okay? Right? Somewhere down the line, there's going to be X uh, to power Q in between there now. And that's multiplied. So just be absolutely clear, right? Absolutely clear. This guy here is this, right? And now I'm going to do this one over here as another massive bracket right next to it, right? So don't be frugal with your working out, right? You need to be quite um, generous, right? So this one here, Q20 plus Q. 1x1 plus q2x2. No, that's a lie, because this is the second one there is 1 on x. So let me replace this guy, right, with times 1 on x. And this is 1 on x squared plus plus. And the last term for here, because p is bigger, I don't have a p term, right? qqx, oops, sorry, 1 on X, Q, all right, perfect. That is the pink over here. Now, once you did that, you're like, okay, that's nice. Where's this question going? If I go back to question um, over here, right? Part one, I found that the term that's independent of X, in fact, let me copy that over here, over here, and I'll start that over here, right? Yeah. So the term that's independent of x from part one is this, right? So maybe I'll put, um, I'll do it like this, get rid of the hearts, just to show you this, right? So right now, this is the green, this is the pink. The blue was from part one, and the blue independent of x term is this guy. Because the blue is equal to green times pink, I'm going to find all the terms that are independent of x from the green times the pink, and then it should equal to this blue term over here. Right? So let's find them. Which terms, if I rainbow expand this, right? Or yeah, when I expand this polynomial times polynomial, which ones will the x cancels out? I know that for sure. This guy, let me use different colors. Right? Let's use yellow. This guy times this guy, no x. This guy times this guy, no x. Yeah, 
showing this. No X, right? Because X times one X goes away. Similarly, this guy times this guy, no X, gone. Now, when's the last one that um, that can happen? The Q times the Q, right? So every one of those, when I expand it, X times one and X, X goes away, they, they're independent of X, right? So what I'm going to say is this. Term in independent, let me zoom in. Term independent of X for the green times the pink would be P0, Q0, right? That's the first yellow rainbow there. The green rainbow would be P1 times Q1. The pink rainbow, P2 times Q2 plus dot, dot, dot. Now, let me just look at the question. Does it look like, it looks like it, right? And then P, just check, sorry. Yep, P, P times P, times Q, P. Hmm. P, P times Q, P. Which one is bigger? A oh, P is less than Q. Sorry, guys. So, P is less than Q. I was thinking, oh, that's a bit weird. So, um, P is less than Q. So, I'm just going to, alter this slightly if that's okay sorry my bad my bad let me delete this right p is smaller than q right oh bummer so my bad up here i don't think it changes part a right but it does change this slightly right in that if p is bigger than that then the last term here should be just p's right just p's so this guy here isn't needed. Good. Cool. Yeah. So let me just change it. Apologies. Right. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change. P is small. Yeah. So then on this one here, sorry, there's a big gap in between. Um, what I need to demonstrate now is that this guy is P, and I'll just make this bracket longer. Right. Easy. Easy fix. Easy fix. And plus dot 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 plus Q Q on xq okay yeah hopefully it didn't really damage the concept the concept is still we compare the coefficient compare the coefficients of the green bracket multiplied by the pink one sorry there's a big gap in between the two now that's fine now the first three rainbows are exactly the same but the last rainbow right now how did i pick up that i did a mistake pp that wasn't anywhere until i do it now right that wasn't anywhere previously it was pq and qq right i don't want that i want this guy so the last independent of x where x cancels out is this guy multiplied by blue of q times p, right? And then um, one on p xp cancels out with xp. Perfect. Now, so I'm going to now set this blue equal to the top blue and therefore, right, by comparing... terms independent of x and let's spell that better independent of x top blue right actually i'll do it like this this guy the bottom blue oh also in the question right can you see the question here it looks almost the same right except for the first part is one, and that makes sense because P0, Q0 are both one, right? It's one, because then now it looks exactly the same, right? Boom, 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 okay, cool. Therefore, by comparing the two coefficients, I can conclude that one plus P1, Q1 plus P2, Q2 plus dot, 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 P, P, Q, P, all right? which is the question equals to the uh, the answer from part one, right? Over Q. Was it PQ? Yeah. Actually, let me check that. P plus Q. Yep, perfect. And that's my answer. Guys, so apologies for the slight hiccup at the start, right? Q is actually... Um... Hmm, I thought I changed it. Did I just change it? 
Oh, I thought I changed it. I didn't even change it. Uh, let me change it again. So P is smaller than Q, right? So P comes before Q. All right. Apologies for that small hiccup, but the way you do this question, right? It looks hard because there's a, a number of things you need to consider when you do this, right? But the most important concept is that in part one, the term that's independent of X, if you divide that expansion by XQ, right? The one with the XQ cancels out and that's one that's independent of X. Second part, when you are given, right? This concept here, right? When you're given um, a binomial equals to the product of two other ones, it's always smart to compare the two other ones, use the rainbows, right? So that's this part here that I'm talking about here. Use the rainbows to identify and compare, um, in this case, the terms independent of X. When you do compare the terms independent of X, you get the first part, of the answer was that the second part of the answer when you compare the rainbow is that set them equal to each other, uh, set them equal to each other to get the identity that you want. Hopefully that was okay. Apologies for the little error in um, setting up the question, but I don't think that changes the message. Guys, if you like that video, like like the video and subscribe and tell your friends. Thank you. See you later.